Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be going over scraffito. If you're unfamiliar with the term, it literally translates to Italian meaning scratched. It's a reductive surface technique that people use to get different colors and just different results all across the board. So we're going to be going over that. Today I have a tray that I have made. I have covered this in a underglaze and I know that I haven't really gone over underglaze on this channel before. Essentially, Amico makes a lot of them. It is a velvet underglaze. Essentially, it's just kind of a high fire paint, um, but I do know that like Speedball makes some. There's a lot of different ones and you can also end up making them yourself if you're into like glaze mixing and stuff like that. But essentially, it's just kind of glaze without the glass former. So that way you can do this on to greenware and that way you can use it to get different surface textures. So what I have here is uh, my tray. It is now fully covered. You do want to do three coats of this just like you do with a lot of your paint on glazes. Otherwise it will come out streaky and if that's what you're looking for then that's what you're looking for. You can kind of water them down to use them like watercolors but this is still in the greenware stage so it is still somewhat able to be worked on i can you know scratch the surface of it and which is exactly what we will be doing for this process okay so i have my tray all covered in underglaze now the thing that you want to be kind of cautious on when doing this is when you are adding a paint onto a greenware anything uh, it will rehydrate a bit. So I let this get to a little bit over leather hard where the edges started to get kind of chalky. And then I painted this a couple times and then it ended up getting really malleable to the point where the entire tray would end up warping if I kind of picked it up in the wrong way. So I let it redry again. So the tools that I will be showing you guys is um, I have my favorite, my diamond core carving tool, just kind of a general uh, pointed stick here, a needle tool, and then one of these rounded ones at the edges. Mine's a little dirty, don't mind that. But these are all great for scraffito. So another nice thing about this is once we have this on here, I could technically end up drawing on this with pencil. I could just go ahead and, you know, go in with my pencil about what my design's gonna be. I've decided with this one, I wanted to do little strawberries just because of the pink kind of reminds me of it. Like that. And the nice thing about this is pencil does not fire that high, so it will not show up later. Because my clay underneath here is going to be like a beige color, we are going to scratch away this and it's going to reveal the beige underneath. So let's go ahead and start with the needle tool. You do want to wait until this is kind of at a dry enough consistency that you're not getting a ton of, you know, clay coming up with every scratch. That is kind of the key is to get this at the right time. And I always like to have a brush around so that way I can kind of wipe away things as I'm doing it. Now that kind of did the base layer, but let's go ahead and go in with our rounded tip here. That way you can see a little bit more of it. We can really get down there. Starting to pick up a bit more. Sometimes this may take you a couple of tries to get all the way down to your bare clay. Especially if you do do the full three coats. There's my little strawberry. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over tools to my diamond core one. These guys are great so that you don't have to have extra stuff that comes up with it. They're much cleaner, so. I mean, there's still gonna be junk that ends up on your tray or whatever you are working on, but these I find that you don't have to go over them a million times. So 
so we'll just keep doing this. to take my kind of pointed wood stick. You can use like a, you know, a skewer that you would cook with, but you can really use this to get some depth in there if you'd like. But this technique is really good for getting, you know, a very subtle texture. And also I find it to be a really nice result for, you know, not nearly as much work as tediously glazing everything. keep this tool around just so that way I can, you know, trace the lines for, you know, anything that needs to be retouched up. one last one on this other side here. strawberry plate. All right, guys, so there you have it. That is how to scrofito. I do want to mention that underglaze is not the only option for a surface to carve through. So people use different color clays, they'll use colored slips, you can dye your clay, you can use a red, you know, red clay body and put like a coat of, you know, a white uh, slip over it from like, say like a porcelain or just a lighter clay body in general to get that same effect. Your clay underneath, the color of it, will definitely um, have a big impact on what this looks like later. Because a lot of the times people will just go over this with a clear coat and therefore with me, um, you'll see that my clay color underneath here is kind of like a tan. And so it will show up as a tan underneath there. But say you want like a white, um, maybe you would want to, you know, use a white stoneware or a porcelain underneath this so that way you can get like that pink white or whatever color you just decide to use. But 
again like i always say there are a million different ways to do this this was just kind of the general gist of scrapito it is a great technique i always recommend people trying this one it is a lot of fun and the carving is so satisfying at the end so i hope this video was helpful if you like this video go ahead and hit like subscribe and thank you all for watching i will see you next time